Welcome to another episode of Bible Q&A. Today we're discussing, what can the ten lepers teach us? In Luke chapter 17 verses 12 to 19, ten lepers saw Jesus Christ while he was walking by and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They didn't want to be leprous since people with leprosy were unclean and unholy and had to be separated from the rest of the society, according to Leviticus chapter 13 verses 45 to 46. In the past, when you had leprosy, all you had to do was go visit the priest, and various procedures would take place that would heal you, according to Leviticus chapter 14. However, due to the increasing sin of the Israelites, these procedures were no longer working so they needed Jesus' help to be clean. Jesus Christ told them to go to the priest anyway, and the ten lepers all obeyed, despite the fact that doing so didn't heal people anymore. However, as they went, they realized that they were now clean. Nine of the men went on their ways, but one of them didn't. This man thanked God and glorified him, before going back to Jesus Christ to thank and praise him as well. This man was a Samaritan, while the others were Jews. He was the one man that actually showed gratitude for the healing, and he was the only one who really cared about the leprosy leaving him. This isn't just a story, it's an allegory. It means something much bigger than ten men who were sick. The leprosy of these ten men represents the leprosy of this world. We are leprous because we are unholy and unclean to God as it was said in Isaiah, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6. We can also look at Isaiah chapter 1 verses 4 to 6. Our general leprosy comes from the sin of Adam and Eve, which brought death to us, according to Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 while the sins that we started committing afterwards are the wounds and sores that leprosy is composed of. Such sins are described in Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21, Romans chapter 1 verses 28 to 32, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 to 10, and Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 to 32. Despite this knowledge, the Israelites killed the prophets who would have cleansed them with the truth, according to Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 22 and Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 12. And in these last days, there are people who will not want to listen to the truth, so their wounds will remain with them. According to Revelation chapter 9 verses 20 to 21 and chapter 16 verses 10 to 11. Notice how it isn't Jesus or the priest cleansing leprosy anymore. It is the truth. The truth has been described as something that is capable of cleansing our sins when understood and practiced, according to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Just like how the leprosy of Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5 was healed because he obeyed Elijah's instructions, if we obey God's instructions, which are the truth, with the power of the Holy Spirit, the infirmities in our lives can be changed and we become new people, walking in newness of life. As St. Paul said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 we can also look at Romans chapter 6 verses 3 to 4. The nine lepers who didn't come to thank Jesus represent people who feel entitled to healing, who feel, ah, oh, I'm a Christian, I don't need to really learn, I know who God is. They don't really care if someone has new knowledge to share with them. The one guy who came back to Jesus to thank him for his healing represents the people who actually use the truth to its full potential. They use it to change their lives and cleanse themselves of their iniquities. They celebrate the grace that they had to come and know the truth. As it was said in Ephesians, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9. The Israelites, who had just been released from Egypt, had thanked God physically with the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles, but true righteous ones of God around the world thank God spiritually by living his life out and celebrating God's feasts in their hearts. And with all that said, my advice is that 
we should keep in mind the significance of the story of the ten lepers in Luke chapter 17 verses 12 to 19. God has said that he will heal the wounds of this world, spiritual wounds, mind you, so that righteousness will prevail. As it was said in Jeremiah, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. As the psalmist said, He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. Psalms chapter 147 verse 3. We can also look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 39. And that is where I'm going to stop with this Bible Q&A. What can the ten lepers teach us? The ten lepers can teach us about sin, the truth, and accepting teachings from God. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.